Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Uh, last week I did a quick introduction to working in a 3D space uh, with regards to Storyboard Pro 3D and I thought that's kind of a nice introduction even for those of you who aren't using Storyboard Pro 3D because it gives you a sense of how um, kind of a simpler interface deals with the, um, the aspects of working in 3D. Um, this week I'd like to continue, I'm going to continue here in Harmony. Um, so far at the beginning of what I'll do here you'll be able to do it in Animate and Animate Pro and as I go on into the things that can only be done in, in Animate Pro and Harmony or Harmony alone I will notify you as you go uh, what can be done in which package. Let's get start, started here. Um, so I'm going to first of all um, arrange my workspace in a way that it will have some windows here that will be useful to me to, to look at. Um, so when you're doing a 3D scene, it's nice to have the camera view and the perspective view both um, kind of next to each other here. Sometimes I'll really put them next to each other, so I'll drag the perspective view down and then pop it into the middle there so that I can see the camera and the perspective view at the same time. Um, sometimes you also want to have the top view and or the side view open. Let me just put all those 3D views here like in the center and then I can use them when I choose to use them. So I added top and now I'm going to add side as well. Um, so that way I can choose whether I want to see the perspective view or the top view or the side view at any given time. And then, you know, over on the right hand side here, I'll, I'll keep the network view open there. And um, I'll just close the library and the X sheet. Um, color window I'll leave open because I'll probably use that. So now I've just got my network view there, I've got my camera view, and then I've got the perspective top and side. So I'll just create a really simple, um, quick scene to work with. And I'll just draw it from scratch here. So um, let's say that I'm building kind of like an environment. Um, I'll add a color here that's going to be, uh, let's say, some mountains. Mountains are the easiest thing to do, in my opinion. So I'll do some mountains way in the background. So due to atmospheric perspective, um, they're going to be kind of lighter in color. And they'll be really far in the back. And um, now to en enable to fill it in, I've kind of got to close. Oops, I've got to close the, the line around the outside of my camera view there. Um, not really doing this very carefully, but once it's closed, then I can paint it in. So let's call this layer far. And I'll create another layer that's going to be my mid layer. So as the mountains get closer, they're going to kind of get a little bit darker and more saturated. And so then I can draw some mountains here in the mid mid uh, area, let's say kind of like that. And I can fill those guys in there. And then I'll add another one which is going to be my close. So a little bit more saturated, a little bit darker. Maybe even a little bit darker than that. Yeah, it looks about right. Okay, so now that I've got that one, I'll just draw this mountain which will be really close, like I'm really looking right at this guy here. And, um, sorry, Camtasia slows my screen down a little bit there when I draw. So, um, oops, uh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put that on its own layer. So let's just drag that line. I'll hit Control or Command X to cut, and then I'll put it on its own layer, and then I can really fill that in there. And let's label these guys. So that's going to be close, and then this guy is going to be mid. So, so far, all I've got is I've got three different layers that are in my timeline. And when you've got those three different layers, um, you usually want to lay these out in a space, in a 3D space, when you want to do a camera move. So, in other words, um, if you don't have any camera move in your scene and your scene is totally um, static, you won't really notice whether the scene is in 3D or whether it's in 2D. Um, that's why you could get away with a really beautifully painted Photoshop background if there's no camera move. Um, if you do want to have a camera move in there, you can still have a Photoshop file, but now you're going to do a Photoshop file with layers, and then you'll put those layers in space. So what I did just here right now by drawing a few layers very quickly in the software, you can choose to draw in the software, and you can draw much more sophisticated and beautiful drawings than the ones that I'm doing here, um, or, if you are working with Photoshop backgrounds, you can work in Photoshop as well. When you import your images in, though, make sure you're importing in with layers so that you'll be able to separate out those layers. And if that's the case, when you're working in your Photoshop file, 
you need to group each layer that you want to be a separate layer in Toon Boom. So in your Photoshop file, you know, you'd select the layer, you'd hit Control G to group it, and then hit the other one, Control G to group it, and so on and so forth. So then you'll have each layer in its own group, and those will then come into separate layers. And I can do another separate tip of the week on that um, to finish up that topic. But for now, let's go into this concept of um, working in a 3D space here. So I'm going to just take uh, another tool here. This is from my advanced animation toolbar. You can find this by going to Windows Toolbars, Advanced Animation. Uh, or if you right click at the top of that space there, it's Advanced Animation. Right clicking in this kind of toolbar area at the top will allow you to turn on and turn off toolbars in the same way that Windows Toolbars will do as well. So it's just a faster way of doing it. So you can right click up there, make sure Advanced Animation is turned on. And then in your Advanced Animation toolbar, there's a handy tool there called Maintain Size. Let me show you the difference between Maintain Size and the Move tool. The Move tool or the Translate tool also works in the same way as the Transform tool does. The only difference between this Transform tool, which is kind of like your main tool here, and the Move tool is that the Move tool gives you a handle that you can drag on, and the Move tool only moves things, whereas the Transform tool here uh, moves, rotates, and scales things. So I often like to use the Move tool when I'm doing things in 3D because I like to have that handle that I can drag on. So when you use the Move tool, if you move a layer forwards or backwards in space, clearly it's moving it towards or away from the camera. Um, you can see that both in the side view and in the camera view here. You can see it approaching and, and returning there. Um, but the thing is that um, although that's useful, I've already kind of drawn the scene the way that I want it to look in the camera view. So if I use maintain size instead and I drag in my top view, do you see that it's moving the layer here in the, actually I'm in the side view, do you see that it's moving the layer in the side view but it's appearing the same way in the camera view? Um, the only difference here is if you pop it all the way forward, you'll see it in front of or behind the other layers. But what it's doing here, the maintain size tool is moving and it's scaling it as much as it needs to to keep it looking the same in your camera view. Keep in mind when you're looking in the top view or the side view that um, the camera here is represented by the camera cone. So picture the camera itself sitting at the apex of the cone. In the side view, the camera view is going to, or the camera itself is sitting right here and it's pointing in this direction. So if you're moving it towards the apex of the cone, it's getting closer to the camera and here it's moving further away. So we want the furthest one to be in the, in the background there. Um, and then I'll take my mid layer and you can just click on it directly in your kind of thumbnail space here to select it. And then the top one is going to be somewhere in the front. So um, of course, without having any camera move, you really don't see exactly what that's doing. So I'll just take my layers here and I'll hit F5 to extend the exposure on my scene. And then I'll go back out into my scene here. And I don't have a camera right now in my scene, so I'll go ahead and add one by clicking on the plus sign and then camera. And then with this camera selected, if I hit the peg button, it will add um, a peg that's going to be the parent of that camera. Just beware, guys, that if you um, don't have anything selected and you click on the add peg button, it gives you this warning here saying, cannot add peg in this display mode, change to display all mode. Um, it's, it's a message that's trying to indicate something to you, but I think maybe it's not totally clear because I've had it come up on the forum a few times. What happens is that the timeline can only display things that are actually connected to, to the composite. And this really doesn't make sense unless you're working in um, Animate Pro or Harmony because you can see what's happening here. Let me turn on Windows Toolbars and then Network View Toolbar and then I'll just order my network up so that I can see what's going on here. So let me explain that error message to you guys once and for all so you, so you can understand what's happening. In the timeline, the timeline only shows things that are connected to your display module here. So um, in other words, the display module, what this does, if I move it, see it, it displays you know, whatever is displayed there. Do you see that my timeline is also updating to, to show what's the, the, what the display module is connected to. This is kind of an important concept because the display module is used both to help with debugging things in your network view, but it's also used to, to show what the timeline is, is going to look at. 
And if you work in advanced display mode, then you can choose which display you want to show in the timeline, but generally it just shows this default display mode here. If you change the display mode, and, and we can right click on here and select display, if you change the display to display all, then it just means that it's going to display things even if they're floating. So in other words, if I add a peg and my peg is not attached to my composite, it will show up in my timeline. Whereas if display all is not on, if it's on display instead, then display doesn't show it. So, so the reason it gives you this error here is because it's just it's warning you that you're in the timeline and if you add a peg in your timeline when it's only on display mode here and you, you don't have anything selected you won't be able to see it in the timeline so hopefully that makes sense in other words if display all is on and you don't have anything selected and you add a peg you can see it in your timeline but if you don't if it's not connected to something you won't be able to see it if you're just in the regular display mode so the, the difference here between doing it that way and actually selecting your camera first and then hitting this button is that since the camera shows up in your timeline and the peg is connected to the camera, then it will show up here. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I was, I was trying to explain something in a way that would make it more clear to people why that error message comes up. Um, and hopefully that did help a little bit. So let's do something now. Let's create bit of a camera move. Maybe I'll zoom in on this guy and, and drag it upwards. I'm just going to create a 2D camera move in this, in this uh, 3D space. In other words, I'm just going to zoom in and zoom out and I'll move it around. Um, and then I'll go into a bit more detail in a second here of, of what we want to do if we want to do a 3D camera move. But still, even though I have a 3D space in the sense that I have a multiplane here, this covers a lot of different scenarios. You don't always want to have a full 3D flying camera move every time you have a 3D space. Um, you always want to judge the complexity of your shot based off of what you need in that shot. In other words, um, if you don't need to do a full 3D camera move, uh, you wouldn't necessarily do that on every shot. If you go out and watch a movie, um, take any movie you like, your favorite movie, if you go and watch your favorite movie, uh, not every shot is going to be a full 3D flying camera move. And um, you kind of can pull that apart a little bit and figure out why, but um, it's a little bit too jarring to the eye to have everything moving all the time. That's why there's a lot of shots that will be completely still, uh, there's a lot of shots that will be pans and zooms, and then there will be some shots when you need to have um, some real emotional impact where it will be a 3D flying camera move, like if you're having an action scene, or if it's an establishing shot, you know, like if you're zooming in from way far away and then you're going to zoom all the way up through this cityscape onto the character that's standing on the roof of the building. That's a good example of when to do a flying camera move. Um, okay, so then returning to this concept now of, of how this is, why a 2D shot is important, because this is still considered a 2D shot even though all I have in it is a zoom. A 2D shot would also be considered a pan. Do you see though that when I have a pan or a zoom, on a scene that has a multiplane that you do see that multiplane effect happening here. Um, it's just I wanted to show you that so that you understand that 3D doesn't just mean full 3D flying camera, 3D objects, 3D also means multiplane. 